Welcome back to the Struthers Communication Group, Thunderdome, Fear Another Bull, with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th Best Weekly Podcast, the show about everything, and absolutely, you say it best when you say nothing at all. Uh, come right at your ass one day a week, since Shotgun is Uncle Nick. How's it going, Nick? Going good today, Andy. Going really good. It's, it, it's one of Nick's sunny days. And it's sunny outside, too, so it's a win-win. Tell friends, spread the word, iTunes, Stitcher, I, Ha Radio as well. Uh, Once yeah. There was this kid who got into an accident and caught and caught the school but we Is that Meryl Streep? Finally came oh, back. no. Because she would have won an Oscar for this music video. I turned from black into bright white. Nah. Uh, uh, why was this a, a hit? I'm not uh, music video. Well, what, which we're watching a music video right now of it. I mean, I think it's just. Oh my gosh! Canadian folk rock group Crash Test Dummies. Uh, oh, 1993. Y- you know, if they were still together, or hell, they still might be together. Uh, they would all have beards now. They look like Mumford and Sons. Uh, this was nominated for a Grammy for yeah. Best Pop Duo, but it lost yeah. to All For One, I swear. <laughs> oh, that was such a good song, though. Uh, I, I'll fully admit, all right, so middle school, uh, th- there was a young lady na- named Leah, and I-, I made her a mixtape. And it definitely had All For One on it, and it worked. <laughs> I thought you were say it had... It, it worked mm, as far as like mi- middle school works. Yeah, I mean, oh man, I'm just looking at these jabronis. This music video could only get more early 90s if they were wearing British Knights, the the shoes that you could only win on Nickelodeon Guts. Oh, yeah. Through. I've never seen a pair of British Knights for sale, except for on eBay. I've never seen the guys who sing it. It doesn't really sync up. And I swear by the moon and the stars in the sky, I'll be there. I swear. Yes, these guys do not look like a, a boy band. Because you know what? This was pre. Backstreet Boys, pre in sync, pre ninety eight degrees, where all the uh, all the all the band members have to have abs and like they yep. all have the look. These guys just look like four dudes who work at Quiznos. <laughs> I, was I, mean, say, I was gonna say Home Depot guys or I something. Mean, or, I mean, they certainly like, can sing, but there's one dude who looks like Snow, you know, in form. Yep. <laughs> uh, but anyways, this is a good song. That is all. And the thing is, this is part of the whole like one hit one thing because I don't think all for one did anything else. Uh, hello, uh, I can love you like that. Ooh, now we have one. to play that song right after we we, we talk about Josh Pelzo. He can sell you a house like that. Uh, Remax pre for because uh, springtime is coming around. That means summer. This is the hot season for buying and selling a home, and it's a long process. So if you're thinking about buying a home, you'll be a first time home buyer. Or you're thinking about selling your house, hit the ground running now. Josh can walk you through the entire process, which it is important. Because even though it's a seller's market right now, you can still get in and get the house that you want. Or sell your house. He'll get you top dollar. He'll do it up. Uh, give him a call. 763-213-4617. JoshPelto.com. Josh Pelto Remax Preferred. All right. So we're, we're doing this. I don't remember these music videos. I, I just... Yeah, I, this is before I was watching MTV. Like, eight-year-old Andy wasn't down with the uh, with the MTV Jays. All this time that you be Wait, that guy looks like a like a young Keith David. Yeah, and I, I bet you if uh, you heard him talk, I bet you he sounds like Keith David. Keith David has a great voice. Yeah. No. No. What? Who? No. I bet you. I I, I want to find a. 
uh, a four-hour YouTube video of just Keith David talking. Or if he did a book on tape. Oh. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know if they... The hook. I can love you like that. Of course, there's the four guys singing, and then there's four girls, like, walking in together and doing their own little thing. Oh, I think they're still together. No way. Uh-huh. Yeah. 1993 to present. Mem- present. Members, Jamie Jones, Alfred uh, Navarez, Tony Borwiak. So, you got James, you got Al, Tony, and the last one, Delicious. Oh, no, sorry. Delius. Delius Kennedy. So there you go. Uh, oh, all right, so uh, where's the singles? Because they've had, they've had eight studio albums. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Three of them are greatest hits albums. Uh, yeah, so I guess I Swear came first. and uh, Oh, I Can Love You Like That was their third hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> third hit? Yeah. One more time with the hook. This is the song I play when eating tacos. <laughs> I will give you my guac, be all that you eat. Show you your everything with delicious meat and cheese and tortilla. It is Taco Tuesday. Wow. It's taking out a whole new meeting. Yeah. All right. So that that's basically how we open up every every show with 90s music, but whatever. Uh, we got a new game. Producer Allie's been busy. It's called Shut Up and Take My Money. We'll get into that uh, when we get there. But uh, uh, Nick, this weekend we were scheduled to uh, go see a Filipino comedian <laughs> and is like, now. No, um, the weather, which I'm sure we'll talk about during the news, um, that kind of they kind of they, they kind of like they kind of stopped everything like like the town shut down it was weird yeah. i was i was unhappy about it eh it's okay although i'm looking forward to it because uh i don't know if you know this uh joe coy has a podcast called the coy pond it's on podcast 1 along with dun, 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 purple from the wind or big deal that is kind of a big deal we though. follow each other on twitter it's kind of neat does he follow you yeah damn Probably just like the Asian connection. He was going to follow you, except he's like, not Asian enough. I'm half. <laughs> Joe Coy's half. He talks about it as, uh, um, so anyway, we were going to see the show, but we didn't mm-hmm. uh, didn't see it. So I watched the Netflix uh, has a uh, has a show. Uh, as yeah, one of special. His, yeah, it has one of his specials on yeah. there. Kind of my first time, like, sit through watching it, because I've only seen clips here and there, kind of like, you know, small commercial stuff that you kind of Joe see on Sapp. Facebook. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was hilarious. The things you see. Uh, um, I, what I wanted to see was his impressions because he does a really good impression of his mother, and it's fantastic. So, um, heartbroken. Uh, yeah. We're not going to see him. Um, it is rescheduled uh, for next. Uh, we guys listening next week, but obviously NFL draft stuff is going on. Yeah. So. And it's like uh, I I I want to see it, but I, I I don't. And it's like poor K. Eh, but what what can you do? Uh, is Soul Asylum from Minnesota? Yes. Okay. Because uh, I believe so. I feel like this song would be right up producer Ali's alley. Do you think she's a missing woman? I, this video is super depressing. It's just missing people. Yeah. I think it's trying to send a message that. A lot of people, a lot of runaways, a lot of people. It's a little bit too on the nose with the song. I don't know. Um, the thing with this is that, uh, like, like, you know, this is a big song. I think a lot of people think this is a one-hit wonder, but yeah. um, there's a lot of Minnesota people who, like, Soul oh, Sound wait, has wait, wait, great hold songs. Hold on. Uh, all right, so in the video, this really creepy guy who looks like um, the younger version. Do you remember the Six Flags? Old guy? The Venga bus is coming, and then yeah. he's like dancing. Yeah, he looks like the younger version of that, and you know he's cruising the strip, he's picking up some chicks, and it's implied that oh, this hook, yeah, he looks like a mix of Joe Paterno <laughs> and the Six Flags old dancing dude. 
And and now he's picking up a, a young lady who probably is 16. Uh, oh, look, look at that stupid smile he had on his face. Yeah, uh, that, uh, that, uh, 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 that, uh, that should be the plug of the of the episode that we're recording. Just that face. This is a uh, such a long episode. I wonder how many of these people are still missing. I, I think they're all missing. Yeah. Oh, which is unfortunate. But uh, all right, so let, let's get into the game. Shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. That that's the extent of production value that we have on it. But that's okay. That's what we come to expect around here. Uh, so the rules of the game are simple. It's an adaptation of our format. Uh, Producer Ali has looked up seven items on the Amazon.com, and we have to guess the price. Uh, however much we're off is our score. Uh, lowest uh, score wins, and if somehow we, we get it right on, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's a $5 deduction, I, I guess it would be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is this rounded to the nearest something? Or uh, I don't know. Uh, I probably should have asked that, but I, I don't think it is. It is. So we should probably just <laughs> hop in with the ninety nines all the time. Wait, uh, you said uh, yes with the ninety nines? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think it's rounded to the nearest dollar, but okay. This is sort of a trial balloon, but we'll work it out. Also, I have a extended description on a number uh, of the products sent to us by producer Allie. Uh Play along at home. Uh, tweet in your scores and uh, let's get rolling. So first off, picture production value. It's a Funko Pocket Pop Keychain. It's a, a, a Guardians of the Galaxy. Baby Groot Keychain. So cute little keychain. That is awesome. Baby uh, Groot. Uh, no description on that, but I mean, it's you need a description of a stupid keychain. I mean, I mean, all right, so we're looking at it. I, yep. You know, since it's on Amazon, like, this could be surprisingly cheap. Like, this could come straight from China, like like those knockoff uh, AirPod uh, headphones. And, like, it could be – this could be, like, $2. This could be an add-on item. Uh, I'll say seven ninety nine. I said six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Feeling fine. Actual retail price. Oh, this is Price is Right. Yeah. Uh, Funko Pocket Pop Keychain. Garnet Zagos, Baby Groot. Six ninety nine. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Dick. Unbelievable. Dick. I'm still pretty sure that uh, Nick and Producer Alley are, are cheating me. Like, this is a... Uh, this is what we do uh, our Wednesday nights. We get together and we, a, and we talk about the show before. Yeah. Crooked game. <coughs> By Chris Isaac. Uh, number two. Uh, photo number two. Uh, XS Scuba Recoil Fins. Uh, XS Scuba Recoil Fins. Uh, production value. Uh, traditional rubber design. Swim fits. Makes a stainless steel spring. They're, they're flippers. They're flippers. They're, they're, they're swim fins. There you go. Uh, oh, okay. Like, foofy. Okay. What did you think they were? Uh, I don't know. I have no... I don't, I don't, like they're earrings? I don't swim. Yeah. All right. Um, fins. So... It's Amazon. Uh, I know you can get these super cheap because I looked into them. You can get them for like 14 bucks if you want. Some of the higher-end ones are up there, though. These look pretty good. Uh, I will say uh, I'll say 104.99. A hundred bucks? Yeah. Holy Christ. Uh, I said 49.99. 49.99. Dang. This is where the men could be the men and the goats could be the goats. Yep. Scuba fins, ninety five oh five. Oh my goodness! So I was over. Oh, so technically you'd win if this price is right, except it's not. So, bam. Uh, next up, uh, picture. There we go. Oh, stupid hat. Uh, number three on uh, uh, shop to take my money. Fedora, packed, packable, foldable Panama straw hat. Aren't all hats uh, foldable? If you think about it. Well, I mean, if, if like they're like a top hat, I don't think you want yeah. to fold. Some. Except I thought I thought top hats do fold, and then like that's a big thing when you when you unfold the top hat. Uh, lightweight, and comfortable. I call bull baloney. Uh, the straw fedora is foldable and packable. A classic fedora styling suitable for business or pleasure or formal occasions. Business, uh, b- business. If you're if you're rum running like uh, that stupid Ben Affleck movie, uh, like Live by Night or whatever it was. Yeah, hey, so, yeah. We're setting up uh, rum operations down in Cuba. Sure. Uh, Jason Mraz hat. I mean, if you're traveling and you're wearing this hat on vacation, don't you think you just wear it on the plane? 
Ah, who knows? All right. Uh, it looks like a nice hat, though. I mean, it's a one size fit all. This could be twenty bucks. This could be a hundred and ten dollars, and be extremely stupid. Um, looks like a legit hat, though. I'm sure the foldable uh, comes into it. I I'll I'll say seventy nine ninety nine. Damn, I said that tw- might be a lot. I tried twenty seven ninety nine. Twenty seven ninety nine. I think we might both be off. Watch this. Is a, this is a four dollar hat. Uh, fedora, packable, foldable, pajama, Panama straw hat. Actual retail price one fourteen ninety nine. What? Oh, Allie, you totally lied to me last I'm night. I'm not paying that much for a hat. So what, is is it made out of gold? I I, I is I, it is it a pack of a hundred? Is it a hundred fucking hats? I, I all right. So hold on, we're, we're gonna look this up on Amazon, and I want to find equivalents. Cause so we are detouring on uh, on this show, uh, and which is sample. Yeah, there we go. One fourteen ninety nine. Uh, there it is in the flesh. Uh, oh, yeah. Except you can find uh, equivalents here. Uh, Ultra Fino Fedora Gullport Reward Panama Hat forty six ninety eight. Uh, uh, this uh, female broad uh, brim hat, fourteen ninety nine. I would never spend a hundred dollars on a hat, unless it's like an, a signed autograph hat. See, I want to, I want to see a picture of it folding. I want to know if it's like legit fold because every hat folds if you apply enough pressure. But whatever. I, even though I, like if, even if, th- if it folds, will it come back to? <laughs> the original, Even though I was piece. I was closer than Nick on that one, I'm more upset that there is a hundred and twenty dollar fedora that exists in this planet. This game is awful. awful. Uh, <laughs> number four out of this game is awesome. Uh, four out of seven. Uh, next up, ooh, bring up the picture. Double camping hammock, lightweight nylon portable hammock with cheat tree strap. So it's one of those um, jabroni granola eating hang. Uh, uh, Dude, you could totally hang it on the side of a, a mountain when you're climbing it, or not. Or more likely, just hang it between two trees. Uh, all right. Um, I feel like these can be pretty expensive. Because um, I know uh, our friend Tyler works at like an outdoors company, and they sell these, and he's got a couple of them. Um, I don't know. I'll say... Fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Damn, I went uh, one seventy nine ninety nine. One seventy nine ninety nine. I think this, this could be it. <laughs> Actually, I the last one was probably I, last it. one was it. But this, yeah. <laughs> I'll feel much better if this is a, like a two hundred dollar freaking camping hammock. Double camping hammock, lightweight nylon portable hammock with tree straps. Actual retail price nineteen ninety nine. What? N- I'm sorry, that hat costs five times more than the camping, than a camping set. What? All right, sorry, producer, we're, we're double checking this. It is 19.99. Holy crap! There's no wow. way. Look at this thing. It's so dumb. <laughs> uh, Nick, I don't think that five dollar deduction is going to come in. It's play. not going to help me anymore. I'm not sure if possible. Uh, next up, come on, yeah, stupid items. Uh, number five out of seven. Uh, and shut up and take my money. This is the best game ever. Uh, SLR oh. brand men's American flag flip flops rubber thong U.S. flutter. Uh, uh, so American sandals. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll say seven ninety nine. <laughs> I had that. I changed it to four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Actual retail price: America flip flops, eight ninety nine. <sighs> it's okay, Nick. Uh, two to go. Ooh. Nice. Uh, classic Wayfair bamboo sunglasses with hard case by Tree Tribe. Uh, so these look like some high-end sunglasses. Pretty legit. Uh, Nick, do you ever own a pair of Ray-Bans? No. I me mean, neither. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm cursed with the uh, with the Korean nose. Like, there's about six pairs of sunglasses on the planet that fit me. That's why I can never order online. Because, like, these ain't, ain't going to fit. Uh, I mean, the thing is, I mean, they're so much more affordable getting them online. Like, if you mm. go to, I mean, if you ever go online, if you ever hear the stories of a lot of most um, glasses, uh, what's that, from a prescription nerd here who needs prescription glasses, like a majority of, of glasses places go to the same thing. That's why 
getting like your eyes checked and getting glasses are like yeah. three, five hundred dollars. Um, you have to find good places online to get cheap ones. Well, with the the Koreans, we have no nose and we usually have wide heads, so that <laughs> that's why it, uh, it it is not great trying on sunglasses. It, it is truly ironically my, my Vietnam. <laughs> Where, where all these sunglasses are made, by the way. All right. Uh, I feel like these could be kind of spendy. What's the most you would ever pay for a, a pair of non-prescription sunglasses? Non-prescription? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of how much I ever paid most in my time. Because, I, as I said, I do buy prescription yeah. sunglasses, and those are a pretty penny. Um, I, th- I think I'd spend more than 50 bucks. I... Which I th- I'm trying to think of the... Who was the big Oakley? Oakley's with a yeah. with a cool thing at the time. Like if you could afford sunglasses, like like that was a big company back then, back yeah. when I was younger. And I uh, I had to spend fourteen ninety nine on a pair of sunglasses once, and I was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's not that I'm cheap. It's that just on principle. It's like uh, nah, maybe you, I, maybe I'm cheap. What Who do knows? you do with um, so driving in the sun? No, I always have sunglasses, except it's always like the, the $5 oh, okay. bin ones. Um, for me, having the sun, the right type of sunglasses, it was mostly for costume. Uh, the, yeah. the, the biggest one I can think of uh, back in college was when me and Jeff were Blues Brothers. I mean, Blues Brothers, you have to have that specific kind of style. Oh, of, see, I, I thought you were saying that your costume was uh, the Oakley sunglasses, and you uh, for Halloween one, you, you went as a douchebag. Every year I'm a douchebag. <laughs> uh, all right, so these sunglasses, I will say eighty four ninety nine. Ninety nine, nine ninety nine, ninety nine. Nine 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 is what Hitler said at the end. Actual retail price forty eight forty two. Damn it! Whoa. The whiff. <laughs> Both of our <laughs> accounts. I, okay. I, I have. To... <laughs> I don't even know. All right, last but not least, little floaties. Sunny life inflatable swimmies for kids. Child armband uh, swim floaties. Fun animal-shaped uh, inflatable. Uh, 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 yeah, floaties. All right, so okay. I'll say nine ninety. Uh, uh, I'll say eight ninety nine. I said sixteen ninety nine. Sixteen ninety nine. Actual retail price: flamingo floaties. Nine ninety nine. Damn it! Change my answer at the end. That could be nine ninety. Oh, I guess it's possible. Uh, whatever. Uh, final score. <laughs> uh, even though Nick had a five dollar deduction, that didn't help at all. <laughs> he has three hundred and forty nine dollars and seventy two cents. I have a spelt robust one twenty four forty two, making me the champion of the first ever edition of. Shut up and take my money. That was thrilling. I did, I that <laughs> I would, there are going to be arguments after the show. I'm assuming I'm going to have to shoot out some text. This is this 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 was um. This was unrealistic. It was very unrealistic. I'm sorry. There should never be... Well, what screwed me off the most? Was it the hat? Yeah, it was the hat. Yeah, F that hat. No. No one's going to spend that much. No. No. Or like something... Or like the, the camping... No, the camping supply. The the tent... The sleeper hammock oh, thing. Oh, yeah, 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 That's yeah. stupid as hell. Yeah. Sorry, 20 bucks? It's okay. Well, I'm going to take my winnings on Show Up and Take My Money and invest in my digital marketing and my website, Strother Communications Group. They'll hook you up. Everything under one roof. The measure of success the way that you do more sales, bigger bottom line. Their digital marketing and web design experts will create your next website and branding that resonates with your customers. That is right. Find out more. Go to scgpr.com. Z, Strother Communications Group. All right, Nick, let's do a little bit of news. You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. Can you... George Bush doesn't care about black people. I ain't got time to believe. You can't handle the truth. The news with Uncle Nick. I, we didn't put this in the news except Barbara Bush died. It's kind of sad. Yes, yes. She yeah. just died uh, over the last couple of days. Also, it's uh, extremely random that she passed away a couple of days after uh, – I forget which website it was. It was like CBS or some respected – respect-ish uh, news website. And it was like, do not publish this obituary about uh, Barbara Bush. Like that was the that oh. was the title. And then someone did. But that's okay. But someone else passed away. Yeah, so our first news story is about the death of Arlie Umi. A lot of people might not know who he is, but I think you do. I think like, 
Yeah, it, it's like uh, the wife. Like you don't know the name, but you, you will know the face. Yes, yeah, so I got to start from uh, a lot of people know him from '87 from Full Metal Jacket. A very interesting, twisted movie, but he's the drill instructor guy. That's like all he plays. Yeah. I am gonna report <laughs> Hartman, your yeah. senior drill instructor. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. And the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be, sir. Do you maggots understand that? Sir, sir yes, sir. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sound off like you got a pair. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> if you ladies leave my island, if you survive recruit training, you will be a weapon. You will be a minister of death praying for war. But until that day, you are pukes. You are the lowest form of life on Snowball. Do you like that name? Sir, yes, sir. What? You asshole for sucking buttermilk. Was it you, you scroungy little fuck? Huh? <laughs> no, sir. You little piece of shit, you look like a fucking worm. I bet it was you. Sir, no, sir. Sir, I said it, sir. Matthew Modine. Well, no, no, no so he is. <laughs> what have we got here? Fuck. Uh, so he... Ardley Ermey, uh, I've heard in interviews with him, like he has an interesting story. Like he is from Kansas. He uh, got in some trouble as a high schooler. And then the judge is like, uh, either we're going to put you in jail or you can join the army or the Marines or uh, an armed service. And he's like, ah, all right. Uh, so he joined the Marines, uh, <laughs> served in Vietnam, I think three tours, 14 months, something like that. Uh, got injured, uh, medically retired, went to the Philippines. And opened up a, a brothel slash bar and ran for a while. He's like, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> and then they started filming war movies, and he started being a consultant on some of them. And then when Stanley Kubrick was doing Full Metal Jacket, uh, there was a uh, – I forget who the actor was. I don't, I don't know who it was. But Ermi was consulting on the movie. The actor was cast as Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. Didn't really work out. And then uh, Gunny uh, sent Kubrick an audition tape of him berating and uh, yelling obscenities and, like, like these really creative burns and digs for 20 straight minutes while being pelted with oranges, which is completely random, <laughs> without repeating himself. So completely off top of his head. This entire first scene was uh, either ad-libbed or written by him which just adds to the amazingness and authenticity of it. And it's it's just amazing. And then from there, like uh, he went on to a long career. He was in one of our favorite movies, Saving Silverman, which. (laughs) How about this? We tell him we got dates tonight. He can't be here because we're getting laid. Nah, he'll never believe that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. We'll tell him we got ghosts. Oh, boys. What's for supper? Uh, Listen, coach. We have ghosts. Uh, what? We, we were thinking that maybe you staying here is not such a great idea. Yeah. Nonsense. It'll give us a chance to get to know one another again. By the way, did you boys take care of that bitch that was going to marry Silverman? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We snuffed that bitch just like you said. Good. How'd you do it? Uh, we ate her. You ate her? Yeah. We ate her. Alive. My hat goes off to you. You boys are smart. That's the perfect crime. <laughs> then also, uh, Gunny Time. Um, then also, uh, the mail call show. Yeah. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's in everywhere. I mean, for on kids. Your behalf. Yeah, that rep. I mean, he was in, he does voices guy. for everything. <laughs> <laughs> he just like javeled in the first down marker and killed the ref. <laughs> he's in a jail. Uh, All right, well, uh, one more. Oh, that's Coach Norton. He was a big influence in our lives. He taught us many things. Two things you gotta remember, boys. Number one, stay away from women. All they want from you is your man juice. <laughs> now, if you get any urges that you can't suppress with hard liquor, it was this. <laughs> oh, number. Two. Oh, number two. Two. Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. <laughs> What's the name? Finally gets in the game. 
Uh, yeah, because uh, I think he was in uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the reboot, and then also he was the the voice of the toy soldiers in Toy Story. Yes, he did. He did everything. He was in video games too. He's if you don't, you might think you don't know him, but I guarantee you know him. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was the police captain in Seven. Yes. Yep. I don't think he was as you know that that obviously wasn't the the craziest thing that you've seen yeah. in that movie. Oh, uh, he was in um, Leaving Las Vegas for some reason. I don't remember that Toy, toy Soldiers was. He's in two episodes of House. Do you remember that? I do not. He was John House. Oh, did he? Is no, he didn't dad? play his dad. Did he? Was it? I thought it was someone else. They got him, but wouldn't surprise me. Uh, House didn't have a good relationship with his father in the oh. show, which makes sense. Oh, you don't think? Oh, you think? Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, so yeah, Arlie Remy passed away. Uh, Age of seventy four, pneumonia. So I feel like that's a, a way a lot of older people go. Pneumonia. Yeah, I think it's a common one. I think it just slowly things shut down. Yeah, stuff well, like that. It's unfortunate, but R.I.P. Gunny. Uh, thank you for your service and thank you for the many years of awesome entertainment and also that first scene from Full Metal Jacket is just so. I, I probably watch that once a month. I, just to think of new ways to insult you. Andy does insult me a lot off, off, off the show. You will not laugh. You will not cry. Which is sad. Oh, he's in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what's next? All right. Uh, next is a story, kind of going back full circle to the Blizzard, uh, and we'll talk more about the Blizzard, about this too. But uh, Sun Country Airlines is in some hot water with a bunch of its passengers um, over the snowstorm over last week. Last weekend, uh, it delayed, obviously, a bunch of flights. I mean, Minneapolis, uh, the, the airport was shut down um, due to a uh, a weird situation with uh, Sun Country was that uh, a promotion that they had ended that weekend with uh, people flying people to Mexico. And yeah. because uh, their flights got canceled, um, Sun Country kind of told customers uh, they would need to book their own trips, trips home on other airlines. And that's something you don't really uh, should, should do. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I know people are upset, but also like uh, flying cut rate airlines. I mean, w- w- what do you sort of expect? Yeah, like uh, you should not be able to fly a round trip to Mexico for three hundred dollars. People want to though. So they can you know. Get drunk on those uh, beaches and maybe, yeah, like, and get cocaine. Yeah, like, I, I know Spirit Airlines. You can take the red eye and uh, it, you can go round trip for like under two hundred bucks. But if you do that, like, you I don't think you get any room to complain about having to pay for a ginger ale or not enough leg room. There's no blankets. Uh, oh, you have to pay for uh, a, a checked bag. Uh, people want to ch- fly cheap, though. That's the thing. I mean, that's why there's a bunch of airlines going in. And um, what's just making news right now, which I didn't add in for a news story, was there was an airplane that I think I think it was Southwest that had the um, yeah. the uh, engine explode and, like, shrapnel from it, like, like broke into, like, the window and, like, killed a passenger. I mean, there's some scary, scary stuff flying nowadays. But, um, yeah, it, this is just a really weird situation with Sun Country. uh um, having like a promotional reason was a reason like they like they um, canceled this promo and it's just like oh you have to get your way back. Uh, there's one story on KSTP about a guy having to spend two thousand dollars to get to get back to Minnesota. It's like yeah, you know it sucks, but yeah, I mean it's kind of the risk you take flying. But uh, yeah, anyway, to kind of go on with the weather and stuff. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys traveled over the weekend. Andy, did you go out? Eh, not really. Yeah, um, you were smart if you didn't. Uh, I took this snapshot uh, over the weekend uh, from WCCO. Had this uh, statistic since Friday. There were 630 crashes, uh, 1,182 spinouts, 20 jackknife semis on Minnesota roads around the Twin Cities. And I think, um, luckily, I think only, I think there was... One or two casualties. Uh, I think there was a crash by like the Lowry Tunnel. But uh, yeah, if if you're out this weekend, I mean, you're brave. But it was like driving through like the planet of Hoth. Like it was a 
like a like a winter s- desert storm, man. Like you could not see anything. I unfortunately was driving through the Twin Cities, and it was it was horrific. I I I, I, I am surprised I'm still here. Uh, yeah, it's okay. What's next? All right, uh, our final story is um, <laughs> some happy notes, some levativity is. Bill Murray and his brothers. Do you know Bill Murray and his brothers? I did not know that. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, uh, I'm kidding. Um, they are starting a, uh, uh, well, not starting because there's one already, but they are opening a Caddyshack themed restaurant in Chicago. Oh. Or, or near Chicago. I think the city was, uh, it, uh, I think it's uh, in Rosemont. So if you're a big fan of Bill Murray, which you know a lot of us are, I mean, how can you not? Like Bill Murray, um, his brothers obviously all big in the entertainment industry, and I think I think a couple of them were working on uh, Caddyshack with uh, Bill. Uh, well, I don't know if you're a big golf fan. Movie uh, Caddyshack is one of the key movies of the '80s, and you know they're gonna make a just a just another restaurant. Uh, there's a with a crispy potato golf balls, cheeseburgers, Caddy shakes. Um, as I said, this isn't the first one they have. Uh, I think they opened one in St. Augustine, uh, Florida, over a decade ago. Mm-hmm. So this is from Fox News. So pretty exciting if you're, I said, if you're a big Bill Murray fan, if you're a fan of the, then the film series, the Caddyshack one and two. Uh, you know they're gonna have a bunch of pictures, posters, and stuff, kind of like a, well, what's it called, the Planet Hollywood style, I think. Yeah. I come but, Planet Hollywood didn't work out. Uh, I think I think it was really overpriced for subpar food. Oh, but that's never stopped any other restaurant chains. I I I I think they put a lot more money into it, and they weren't getting any money back. Like a lot more, I think. I wanna well, I wanna look at a menu. All right, so Planet Hollywood Orlando. I think there's still one in Vegas. Yeah, that's the that's the hotel. Uh, that's the hotel I, mean, I like to stay at. Yeah, but I mean, I think they have like a restaurant, like yeah. like 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 the restaurant restaurant, like kind of how um, Minnesota had one, mm. which I thought was fantastic. I had a good, I I loved going there as a kid. The oh, the twice cooked buffalo wings, thirteen ninety nine chicken wings baked and then fried to perfection and tossed in buffalo sauce, served with celery, carrots, blue cheese dressing. You you know why they cook it twice? To kill the germs. Yeah, so that that they can just do up a. a a, a big order baked and then just fry them real quick. And then they can sit around for weeks. Yeah, a- actually, I'm surprised one, one of the twice cooked is a microwaved. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past uh, place like, or grill specialties. Uh, 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 signature sandwich. Bird is the word. Crispy fried all natural chicken breast, buttermilk ranch dressing, pickles, cheddar, slaw, and hot honey sauce on a brioche bun. Seventeen ninety nine. That actually sounds very good. Seventeen ninety nine. Dang. Uh, this is uh the Plant Hollywood Orlando. Oh, okay. So that makes mocking up because you're where all the kitties are. Yeah, but I mean, h- how big of a draw is a restaurant where it's all it's all the stuff on the wall? I don't think so. And, and you know, we've had episodes, uh, news stories. We talked about. Um, earlier this year, um, I mean, because um, the the food industry is kind of changing a little bit. Uh, we talked about um, the industry of like the Olive Gardens and all those things. The Applebee's uh, have been suffering actually quite a bit. So I'm kind of, you know, I think it's kind of risky to open up a new uh, restaurant right now. I, am, uh, I don't know. It's kind of. I don't know, I'm trying to think uh, in Minnesota. I don't. I can't think of any that jump to mind. They like, like, ooh, you go to the place because of what's on the wall. Hmm. Did Fud Rockers have a thing back in the day? These would be Fud Rockers. I are remember are there still Fud Rockers? I don't know if I don't know if there are anymore. They started the week launching their latest promotion. I love Olive promotion. Garden's taking all you can eat <laughs> to a whole new level. The chain now is introducing a never-ending pasta pass. Oh, so oh for hundred dollars, you can eat all the pasta, salad, bread, and soft drinks you want for seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Interchanging its ways. 
Come on down to Olive Garden for an inauthentic Italian experience that is guaranteed to leave your family consistently disappointed. Our food is mushy, unappealing, barely edible, and looks nothing like any of this. <laughs> and while you're here, come visit our kitchen to see our many still under warranty pots, uncorroded by any form of seasoning that might pleasure a customer's mouth. That's why we have some of the oldest pots around. In fact, think of us as a pot museum that occasionally serves something resembling yeah. food. So the thing about this is uh, last week tonight we were saying that they didn't use salt or oil in the water because it kept the warranty on the pots longer. And <laughs> it's the exact opposite of what you want when you're boiling pasta because it, you, you want the, the, uh, the, the pasta water to taste like the, the ocean. A little bit of salt. Nice little slick of olive oil on there. But nah, nah, not Olive Garden. Why would you want that in in an Italian restaurant? Because we care about them a lot more than we care about you. Olive Garden, when you're here, why are you here? (laughs) Um, Wait, uh, a quick question since uh, you're the business person and and you're a cooking expert. Uh, I didn't know uh, there would be a need for warranties on, quote, pots at all. I didn't know that's how the business model works when you own a restaurant well, that you that you're renting. <laughs> that, no, I, I imagine you know with the restaurants you, you get a massive bulk discount on them, and it's just a uh, like you're you're not going to you know, turn in a pot and cash in the warranty. Although hell, maybe they might, but it's just more of a uh, like a bean counter line item, and just like oh, we can extend uh, the warranty on these pots. And uh, so we don't have to buy new pots, and then that saves us X amount in this fiscal quarter. It's just like, yeah. I didn't yeah. realize pots go bad so much. Uh, as a, someone who usually doesn't cook much until recently, you know, I I, I didn't know that's I I don't know I don't know the lifeline of how long pots last. I mean, I understand like uh, buying cheap pots, maybe yeah. like Walmart or something. Obviously, they can go pretty quick, but you know, I figured restaurant style, you know, you don't. Know, buy Walmart style pots, right? I mean I assume things go long time, right? Yeah, the I mean like Teflon pots and pans that you you get from like Target or whatever, like those will go bad pretty quick. But I mean just stainless pots and pans, nah those those things can go for years. Decades probably. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that is all. Um and that is the news. The news with Uncle Nick. From the entire Channel 4 news team, I'm Veronica Corningstone. And I'm Ron Burgundy. Go f*** yourself, San Diego. Ah, uh, hello, hello, hello. Yes, the, the best night's sleep you will get, Lisa Mattress, is where it is at. Nick, how, how is your Lisa Mattress? It's fantastic. I we love got, it. We got to work on getting producer Allie a Lisa Mattress, because then she can not talk about her experience as a testimonial. But that happens. Uh, it's the best mattress that I've ever owned. It ships straight to your door, which is great. Don't have to line up a delivery time uh, with a mattress store because, like, well, what time can we get there? We can get there at one seventeen p.m. next Tuesday. Nobody is ever home at that time. That is all. Uh, and you save 100 bucks. Lisa.com slash purplefdw. 100 bucks off any size mattress you one, the queen, the king, the California king, the full, the twin, the whatever. Uh, again, lisa.com, L-E-E-S-A dot com slash purple F-T-W. Hit it up. Uh, Nick, what's uh, going on from you? What are you doing this weekend? Uh, this weekend is a light weekend. I think I'm going to go in and put some extra overtime because uh, the following week I got some uh, Vikings draft party and I'm seeing the Infinity War. Infinity War. That is neat. <sighs> And he hasn't seen a majority of the Marvel films. I saw Thor Ragnarok, and it was hilarious. He saw Thor Ragnarok. They should have all of those movies uh, be funny. I, I think it would, it would help a couple of the least popular ones, I guess. Like, was Ant-Man funny? Yeah, I thought it was funny. Yeah, there you it go. It was serious and funny. Uh, serious and funny, just like the show. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, I Hear Radio. And if you enjoyed the show, uh, tell a friend, spread the word, add to the Dromey Homie Army. Uh, big thanks, producer Ali. Uh, but for Nick, I'm Andy St. Anyong, sign our and bye bye. We'll talk to you next week.
Thanks for listening to Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome. Jerome.